there's one thing that I would say, starting on a law firm, this is for everybody here, is, is the cheapest, the least expensive business, you, you, it has the, the least expensive side of costs. You need a telephone, it can be a cell phone, you need a printer, and maybe a scanner, and, and, and probably a fax, and you need malpractice insurance, and that can range from anywhere between $1,000 to $1,200 in your first year. That's really, I need business cards, which, and I decided, I got business cards because I needed to go to an event quickly. I went to Staples, yeah. and I got, I got them within, within 10 hours. So I went to an event that I had this business card out, and then a week later, I got it professionally made, and you know, I, and then I got some stationery. And I got stationery that had the logo of my law firm, and that was it. So that if I moved addresses, I wouldn't have to spend five hundred dollars to get new ones. Um, but um, and web design is, is key. I have someone that I can refer to you if you need that. But it's that's your that's your biggest business card. The face is on the web, um, and there's a lot of these little little these small things like startup groups that get together where you can go and you can, you can kind of speak to them. But um, it's really not that expensive. You don't have to spend a lot of money, and you can get off the ground running without spending much. And then everything you get goes into your pocket. If you have someone that you think you can rely on that's out of work to do some business, be in touch with them because you might get overwhelmed on some things, which I did. So I had an associate who I gave work to when I needed him to do work. It was a very big help, and you make up for it and go for it. Um, so. There, there's a lot you can do for anyone that really wants to do it if you have the experience. If you don't think you have the experience, associate yourself with someone that does and then go to them and pay them if you have to initially. So then you, you're actually practicing ethically. Um, there's a lot of ways you can do that. So that's what I say to people that want to be a sole practitioner. And you can get an office at the Regis, I think, for the first three months for $100 a month. Okay. So the economy has gotten a little better then. <laughs> um, but but it's it's really and, and at the virtual office you meet your clients there and they're like wow what a great office is you know but there's a lot you can do that you don't have to throw a lot of money up front on. So if you're thinking about that and you think that fees are a bar they're not a bar. You live with your mom and dad if you have to. You can do it though. I want to remark on the business class, and like I said before, I had them when I was in high school. They weren't like originally really cheap. But anyway, I talked to a lot of people that are even in law school. They don't have them. It doesn't cost much at Jason's place. They both, when you need somebody to use the bench, you want to have to write it down on a poster or whatever. You can send them a flyer. Those are the numbers. Yeah. 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 Ye
I, I went through, I went to a good undergraduate, went to a good law school. I never studied at night. Never. Um, I never, when I first started work, I didn't have the stamina to work late hours. And I developed it to the point where I could work if I needed to. And I, I, I don't glorify it, but if I need to, I can, I can push through the night, get something done, and it, it will look good. Like I can let a good brief overnight. Um, and it's something that I had to learn through the firm. Uh, and also, um, the, the quality of the adversaries that you get, they are so much higher than the quality that we see in the government. So going to the government side, it's, you know, the pluses are very different. Uh, you don't get the training that you're getting on the law side. You never have the compensation, which really helps early in the career when you pay off your loans. Um, also, like, there's, like, there's, like, life costs early on at that point, right? Like, I'm paying for your house. I got married. Um, the, the plus side to the, to the government side, I've only been there for four months, but um, you, for me, it's really, I guess, you find that mission. Like, that was the only thing that I found missing in the firm, in the sense of, like, I, I found the work to be very mentally almost addictive. Like, the, the challenge and, and the, 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 the growth was just really, really fascinating. But at the end of the day, I was making the company, some basic company, a million dollars more. And uh, you know, we're talking about sort of the target, right? Like, your goal. That I just didn't see that being in my obituary, right? Like, like Kelvin Chen <laughs> made Bank of America an extra $5 billion. He has three children. <laughs> uh, and so I wanted something that I felt like had a little bit bigger mission. And so I, I'm very thankful for my time at the firm. I felt like I was, I was richly compensated, but also more importantly, like the skill set that I had enabled me to actually, when I made the transition, be impactful on the government side. Because one of the things that I see is that there are a lot of government employees, and this is why I joke about uh, the, the live stream. But on the government side, it's very much true. Like people may not work as hard because the incentives aren't there, right? Like you can't. It's much harder to get fired. It's, it's a much less pressured environment. And um, you know, if you're an idealist, you want you want to have that pressure there. You want to continue to do high quality work. And so I think the firms are good. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a very extremely important or preferential to, to start a law firm, too. The, the biggest difference that I, fa I found is uh, a matter of responsibility. And, you know, so at, at a law firm, you'll be an associate. You could, you know, write the entire brief or, you know, draft the entire response. And um, either the partner will sign it or you'll co-sign it with the partner. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's really usually not your signature. So you can put in all the effort, um, but it's the partner's responsibility to sign off and how that case goes, whether it settles at a, at a, at a favorable number, um, or you know, just how the case goes is your partner's responsibility, right? His name is on the line. Um, In-house, I found that you, know, you get your own cases. So it's your name that's on the line. So you're still writing the brief, you're still drafting the response, but at the bottom of that response is your signature. Um, and that makes a huge difference. It's, it's, a, it's a difference in, first of all, stress level. It's, it's a difference in you know, how much you're how gonna think about it. Um, and it's also more gratifying because it's yours. You know, so if you get the favorable settlement, then that's your settlement. Um, and I think that, that's one of the things that I like more about it. That, that, there is more responsibility. It can, it, it can really stink at times, but it can also be um, a lot more gratifying than that. Any other questions? Oh, I have one. Um, a few mentioned that you had um, a mentor. How important have they been in the place where you are now, and how would you? Uh, what makes for a good mentoring relationship? How do you maintain that relationship? My mentors. I've uh, always been taking examples of the companies I worked at, and sometimes I think I had a confidence level, sometimes that, you know, I had a very, very hard file in front of me that I can't do it. And the mentor was really good, like the market. You know, it might be something needy, but you never ever seen in your life, but because of how we can't do it one before, you know, the people will be, you know, just kind of, I'm not telling you very, anything very substantive, but, you know, to give you a great deal of confidence to have faith in your company, and I'm mentoring.
for each of us, it's hard. There's so many more that I know to think about. You know, and for me, it's interesting because I thought about this when I got out of law school. First, I started to start making a lot of jobs. I'm actually with Harvard or so I did. I went to New York once. Okay? And there were many of us. So this thing goes in ways up. Okay? And when I hear now, it's down how many attorneys get admitted. I, um, but, you know, mentoring, mentoring, um, sometimes it's just a, a call to me sometimes from my mentors. One of my mentors that I revere so much has now left the major firm because it just didn't work out. She was a partner. And she flies, she had teenage children, lives in Colston Harbor, and flies on a consultant between Dallas, Boston, and New York. She comes up every week. This is one of my, I'm very close to her. She's, she's a very smart woman. I'm just sad to hear this. And it makes some, me feel, it's unbelievable. I'm calling her and she'll call me once we make sure I'm on it. So as I said to you before, the mentoring and the relationship with her, it's developed into a lifelong mentor. She's very good to that. I have another mentor that's in Buffalo, believe it or not. And all of the counsels that I know never forget this person because, you know, he's a little stodgy, he's a way here. But Margaret Lane was always the one down here in New York City helping him. If he needed something, he called down from Buffalo to speak to the researchers, to the restaurant, to make the calls to me. And I went. I liked him a lot, but you know what? He was tough. It was like a law school professor, and he taught me really well. I left the company four years ago, but I was just These are the mentors, you know, that I consider very close to. And now he's worried about America. Yeah, I just had it on the 